Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a particular knife, the V42. And uh, I'll start by giving <coughs> a little bit of the background and the history of uh, how this knife was developed. It was um, the knife that was issued to and designed by um, the members of a very particular unit. Uh, in 1942, Colonel Robert Frederick, uh, who later became a general, was tasked with setting up a joint US and Canadian force um, to train in Montana and they were slated to go to Norway. So they um, began a round of snow and ice, mountain climbing, parachuting, this kind of thing for warfare uh, in Norway. In the event, um, they didn't go to Norway, but they did see extensive combat in Italy. Colonel Frederick decided to uh, issue a particular knife to the unit. Uh, this was common with um, the British commandos, obviously, and uh, certain other units. And it does ha add to the esprit de corps, and it's also something that they uh, will no doubt find useful uh, in combat. So he actually designed the knife, which is now known as the V42 knife. Now... There are many categories of knife and many categories of military knives. You, you have utility knives. For example, the K-bar uh, is a utility knife. You can use it for chopping wood, opening cans, and it will also serve as a lethal edge weapon. And the K-bar design um, is, is, is still around today. It's a very enduring design, very useful to a soldier. The uh, V42 comes into the category of a silent killing knife, and uh, as does the Fairbairn. These knives were issued for generally the task of taking out an enemy sentry. Uh, they didn't really have much in the way of silent uh, firearms uh, to, to any great extent. So the idea was to use the silent knife. Also, it was to institute aggression in the training. When uh, Fairbairn and Sykes designed the um, famous FS knife, um, it, it's well known that when they went to Wilkinson's officers, they grabbed rulers and started fencing with each other. So their concept of the knife was not a silent killing knife so much as a, a, a fighting knife for use against other edge weapons or guys who are armed with other implements. Um, this is a slightly different uh, approach. However, the, the FS knife is suited to silent killing because it penetrates deeply into the body cavities. And similarly, the V42, and sacrilegiously I may say that in some ways it's actually superior to the Fairbairn and um, they both have similar ancestors in Renaissance era stilettos. So the design features of the V42 and I'll compare it with uh, a Fairbairn. So if we take this particular Fairbairn, which is my personal Fairbairn, which is from uh, the Far East theatre, and if you compare it to the V42, let's just... Compare the size, you can see them there. You'll see some pictures where they'll be shown together. Um, very similar, uh, the V42 does have 
uh, a longer blade, as you can see. The blade shape is very, very similar, although the V42 is double ground, which, which is quite unusual. Some other features uh, I, I'll talk uh, in detail. So the first real interesting feature is that thumbprint and what the thumbprint serves to do is to locate the thumb with the, on the flat part of the blade which then indexes the edges of the blade in the dark and it, it's obviously designed for slashing, for the slashing action. So, if we have the knife like this, and you can use it in a slashing action. Then we have the leather uh, washer, for want of a better term, which is behind the hilt. And it's um, somewhere where you can rest your thumb. And then on a thrust, your thumb is cushioned against jamming on the on the hilt. So it shows that the uh, design of the V42 encompassed both slashing and thrusting. Thrusting is the main silent killing technique, as I mentioned earlier, deep into the body cavity, uh, cutting through blood vessels to drop them in. But the slashes uh, sometimes in, in um, an encounter are a barrier removal method that if he's got his arms up in the way, the slash makes him move his arms and then you can go in for the thrust. And as you saw in the picture, the pommel is very sharp. This is known as a skull crusher. And again, the idea here is that uh, after a, a slash or a thrust that's missed, you can come back on a return strike and uh, strike with the pommel. Or if somebody is trying to disarm you, the, the sharp pommel will interfere with the, with the grip. The problem with the pommel was that uh, it did tend to dig into the ribs of the wearer, particularly in things like parachuting, or it would catch on clothing or on your arm when it was in the sheath. So there are examples of original V42s with the pommel ground to, to an extent. And it, it almost resemble, or they, they resemble the pommel on the Gerber II. Uh, the, what's called the Gerber survival knife and that's got a skull crusher but it's got no point on it and that's what some of the guys did to the V42 next we come to the sheath and um, the sheath of the Fairburn uh, was designed in a particular way with these tabs that you could sew to your battle dress. And similarly, the uh, V42 sheath had certain design features. And one of them is this hanger. So your belt goes through the loop and the actual sheath hangs very, very low. And it, it was usually equipped with a tie down that went through this hole here. Now, the reason for that was these uh, troops, the first special service for, force, were um, issued with a quite a uh, hip length jacket because they were operating in cold conditions. And so the length of the hanger allowed the knife to drop below the hem of the jacket. Uh, apart from that, it was a, a well-made leather sheath.
Now these knives were um, manufactured by the Case Company, a well-known and um, very, very well-respected uh, cutlery company in the United States. Now, after the war, they were snapped up by collectors and V42s became um, very much a collector's item, much the same as first pattern uh, Fairbairns and fetching uh, similar prices in the thousands of pounds, thousands of dollars range. Now, original wartime V42s are extremely rare, extremely uh, sought after. So much so that in 1989, Case reissued the knife and um, brought out virtually a replica <clears throat> um, at a decent price, an affordable price. However, these were snapped up and they are now uh, a very sought after knife and they are fetching collectors prices in in um, very very uh, high range of um, dollars so uh, genuine or even the uh, reissue v42s are, are quite rare and very very sought after and the pictures uh, at the start of this video are of genuine wartime uh, V42s from the collection uh, of, of uh, the chaps in Norway that put on a, a fantastic uh, display of World War II memorabilia during one of our seminars. Uh, but the picture you've just looked at is um, the modern reproduction uh, V42 uh, which was um, made and sold by Paul Chen and it's the knife I own it's the one I've been showing you uh, on screen uh, and it's a very very faithful uh, reproduction uh, the the actual handle is made out of leather washers uh, exactly as the original was uh, it gives a good grip Le leather is, is a good grip in the hand uh, it's the same shape as the original and very very s similar to the Fairbairn. Not my favorite shape for a knife. Uh, the cylindrical shape tends to twist in the hand a little bit. I don't think it's the ideal shape, uh, but that's what the original was. Uh, it's got the, the pommel, it's got the uh, thumbprint, it's got the leather backing, and it's a, a very sturdy, well-made blade, takes an edge. And the sheath, uh, as I showed you before, uh, is very faithful reproduction. Uh, being someone who has own, owned a lot of leather holsters over the years, uh, I do have a little bit of an eye for leather. This is a well-made piece of leather. Uh, and together, the two things, the, the knife and the sheath, the Paul Chen version uh, is a very faithful reproduction. Uh, it wasn't expensive. I seem to recall it was somewhere in the thirty pounds, maybe when I bought it. It's a bit more expensive now. I'll put a link to where you can get it. Um, but it was the only way I was going to own a V forty two. It's just for my collection and for when we, we do knife courses, we can talk about different types of knives and so on. You can actually show people um, what the knife was like, even though it's not an original. And finally, uh, the picture you've just seen was the other um, really interesting aspect about the first special service force and this was its close combat instructor Dermot Pat O'Neill and um, Pat O'Neill was um, a colleague and contemporary of uh, Fairburn in the Shanghai Municipal Police he, he was originally from Ireland and he, he went out to the Far East and ended up in the SMP and he, uh, like Fairburn, 
was very, very seriously involved in martial arts training, uh, sp specifically judo. And he uh, gained a very, very high rank. He, he was, to my knowledge, a fifth Dan in the Kodokan uh, at, at the end of his career, um, which he was one of the two highest graded foreigners uh, at the time. So he really did immerse himself. He, uh, after when the war started, he went to America and um, Fairbairn wanted him to um, help out with the OSS training, but instead he went in a different direction and ended up with um, Colonel Frederick in Montana. And uh, not only was he involved in training the guys in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but he insisted on also being operational with them. So uh, his career is uh, is outstanding. He's a very interesting character. There's not a, a fantastic amount about him, but um, I'll, I'll put what there is uh, linked to um, at the bottom of the of this. Uh, and and one final thing is that there was a movie made called The Devil's Brigade. Um, which was about as historically accurate as Where Eagles Dare. But it's a fun movie. And William Holden played Colonel Frederick, and I thought he played him quite well. He's a good actor. Um, but they did the usual Hollywood. They played Fast and Loose with history. But there's a scene, and I'll put the link to it, where uh, the actor who is supposed to be Pat O'Neill uh, is introduced in, into them and uh, there's a section on unarmed combat. Not the type of unarmed combat that really that they were learning, but uh, it's movie stuff. But it's it's a fun clip anyway. So th that's it, the um, First Special Service Force. Um, very interesting uh, unit, very interesting knife, very interesting close combat instructor. And um, as I say, the Paul Chen knife um, is a way of um, having some sort of link to that organization and, and to those guys.